Hello and welcome to the Embassy. My name is Dr. J.C. Matthews and I'm here with my wife and co-pastor Gina Matthews. And what we want to do today is we want to continue in a series that we've uh, been teaching on for the last couple of uh, episodes or the last couple of weeks. And it's entitled The Law of Harvest. The Law of Harvest. Now what we tried to do during that time frame is try, is try to develop or cultivate within a person's mind from a perception standpoint what it is that qualifies as a harvest and how we should approach and perceive uh, reaping and uh, gleaning our harvest. Right. Uh, one of the things that we tried to do from, those, from, from an initial standpoint was to establish in the mind of the believer that it's a responsibility. That's right. You know, that it's not something that's optional and that actually God had established a law mm -hmm. by which he articulated that until uh, daytime and evening, cold and heat ceases, that seed, time, and harvest shall remain. So what we glean from that was simply this, is that if we sow a seed or if we sow, mm -hmm. then there should be a corresponding expectation and responsibility That's right. for us to reap or to glean from what it is that's been sown. But we, we, go, I was going to say, we have to participate in the whole process. That's right. And, and so we took it even a step further. We took it a step further and we said that we have to even grow to a place mm -hmm. where we are not, um, you know, we don't consider reaping or gleaning or receiving mm -hmm. harvest from seeds that we even did not sow. Yes. That that has to become part of, part of our mindset that because the Lord has need of it. That's right. Because there's a greater purpose than just our own desires. Now, God will give us our, the desires of our heart. The, the Bible tells us that he gets pleasure in that. Mm -hmm. But he has a higher purpose that he has for, first of all, the earth, mankind, and specifically his kingdom. That's right. That requires the receiving of natural resources that will facilitate and empower us to participate in fulfilling our part That's right. or our role in that economy. And that is to manifest God's heavenly kingdom here on earth. And he does it in partnership with us, That's right. his sons. So what we want to do today is we want to move even further. The first couple of lessons, we kind of talked about just the spiritual aspect mm -hmm. of the mental aspects of it, trying to develop, as we mentioned, um, cultivate within the person a consciousness for reaping and harvesting right now what we want to move into is the actual literal physical natural steps mm -hmm. that that uh that empower us to play our role mm -hmm. so what we want to do right now is i want to actually start to look at you know the natural process mm -hmm. that we actually go through that allows us to fulfill our role in the process of reaping a seed time and harvest. That's right. Now, if you missed it, um, you go back and, and look over the previous lessons because we're progressively building upon the previous lessons. So there's three other lessons that you're going to need to actually view in order to be where we're at right now That's right. to get an understanding of it. So if you haven't, make sure that you do that, then come back to this particular lesson because what we're going to be doing now is building upon that and moving into what our responsibility is in the natural. So what I want to do is I want to make some statements. I want to kind of give, um, prepare our minds for what it is that we do in the natural mm -hmm. to give us a greater appreciation for an ability to reap our harvest. So I, I want to first of all start out by saying that giving in the kingdom is a spiritual act. It's something that when we talk about giving uh, in the kingdom, it's not loss. So what I want to do is first of all give us a perception that what leaves our hand is not lost, but we have to perceive it more so as that we've sown something. Right. That we have we have given something or we sold something for the purpose of greater return. Right. I was going to say it's important that we do have that purpose when we're sowing because you can give something away if you if it's not purposeful. That's right. It's not establish that it's seed that you're sowing. That's right. And so we're actually going to talk about that, that you have to have an expectation of return and not and not what you gave. 
Right. No, no farmer gives or sows a seed into the ground and comes back and expecting that seed, right. that same seed. He comes back for it to actually have transformed into something much greater than what he actually placed in the ground. So our expectation based on the laws of the kingdom has to be that when we uh, give something, or when I say give, I actually mean sow something, when we release something from our natural possession that we have received from God, that that has an assignment of multiplication. Right. The kingdom is based on the, the principle of multiplication, not, not subtraction and not addition. God's never going to allow you to give anything that he doesn't outgive you right. or, or give back greater multiplied, multiplied in return. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing that we have to develop is that consciousness that when I'm giving or sowing in the kingdom, mm -hmm. it is with a expectation that there's something supernatural happening there. That's right. That it's a spiritual act. Um, the next thing that we have to recognize that it's not lost, but we have to look at it as seed. Mm -hmm. And so... We, we've kind of touched on it, but I want to give some clarification because there's so much talk about seed, right. you know, sowing seed, sowing seed, sowing seed. And people, uh, whatever they do, you know, they, they come to a service or they're in a ministry or, you know, they, they, they want to give. So they just find something, they put it in an envelope and then they give it. And then they have no real expectation or understanding of what actually took place. Right. Um, what I teach is, and what my understanding of sowing seed is, is that seed, when I have seed in my hand, specifically when it's money, mm -hmm. the Bible says money answers all things. So money is a seed that necessarily can transform into whatever I have need of. That's right. So you can buy a house, you can buy food, you can buy clothing, you can buy health care with money. Right. So in the spiritual sense, when we're talking about in the kingdom, and again, the kingdom deals with this natural realm. That's right. It's a rule of authority that governs natural affairs. So we can't get so spiritually minded that when we talk about giving money, that we're simply we're doing something spiritual. Right. It has a natural corresponding response mm -hmm. to what was done both spiritually and naturally. Right. So when you give in the kingdom, it is a spiritual act because it has the ability to exponentially outdo what you naturally gave. Mm -hmm. But here, but here it is. It has to be done on purpose. Yes. It, there has to be a reason for it. So I'm giving whenever I give in the kingdom. I'm sowing because I have an expectation of greater return. But I have to have in mind what it is that I sowed that for. That's right. So you can't just put it in an envelope and say, bless me. You, you you gave that money away. Right. Be, you need to be specific. Yeah, you have to be specific. You have to have an expectation. We're going to talk about that. But but this is a principle that we have to follow and have an understanding of when we're dealing with the kingdom of God. That's right. It is a government. It is a realm of rule over the natural world that is superior to this world system, but is equally for this world. That's right. So we understand that when we sow seed, we're doing something that is supernatural, that is supernatural. Um, and co-pastor mentioned this, that it is possible to give something away right. and you still be calling it seed. Mm -hmm. Now, this is, again, it's possible to give something away and still you believe it's seed. And I'm going to give you three reasons how that's possible, how you can give something away and believe that you're sowing and it not be a seed at all. Right. So th this is very important. Now, yes, it is. I, because I believe that this is the reason why there's so little breakthrough and harvest. That's right. And, and reaping taking place due to our sowing because we do it without understanding and um, the absence of these three things that we're going to talk about. Right. So what you're going to have to do is pay close attention because we're going to talk about something that has the ability if done right to transform your life. But if done wrong, it cause great frustration. Yes. Uh, people uh, fall away from the faith because yes. they're they, not seeing any manifestation. No manifestation. The word is there. It's being preached. Right. And but they don't understand there's a responsibility on their part. Right. That has to be be uh, there to make what they're doing legitimate. Right. To make what they're doing legitimate, there's a lot of illegitimacy in sowing, what we call sowing today, because it's technically not sowing. Right. You're giving it away. You're actually doing exactly that. You're giving it away. Now, these are the three scenarios where we can give 
and there be no harvest. I'm going to mention them, and then we're going to go and actually look at them. The first one is there's no true expectation attached to the giving. There's no true expectation attached to the giving. Yeah. So let me give you an example, then I'm going to give you scripture. You know, you, you can be in a service, and um, it just becomes time for giving. Right. And so before you left home, you put something in your pocket or in your purse and segregated it for giving because you don't want to be left out. Right. You have no expectation. There's no real faith involved. There's no real uh, honoring of God involved. It's just simply, I don't want to be the one that doesn't give. Right. And sometimes even, you know, I point at churches to fault this because we make everybody get up mm-hmm. and, and we clear that role. We don't know whether the person doesn't have anything or not. Exactly. And then we assign certain levels of giving to certain areas. So if a person is over here in the dollar line or, or they're outside of the 20, the 50, the 100 or the 500, then there's a shame brought upon that person. And the, all those different things, those are ways to really hinder um, people wanting to even be involved with ministry. Um, I, I, I just really believe that people have to operate in a way where people are able to give they're able to give with a right expectation mm-hmm. and a right motive and a right way of operating. And all the different religious things that you see that take place hinder that. And, and this, this is a problem that I have. And I, and I want to educate, you know, some, some pastors, if they're doing this, you know, call it what, call it what it is. Right. If it's building, funding, if it's, if it's fundraising for something, call it that. Right. You know, tell the people we're, you're giving for this. Now, if you can do 50, 100, 200, 500, right. or even more, fine. Mm-hmm. That way, the people who, who, are, who, who don't have that level right. of, of giving can maintain their dignity in that I'm not right. giving towards that purpose. Exactly. But when it comes time to give, generally, they're able to participate right. at whatever level they have. Now, that's just a suggestion. Mm-hmm. Because I think it has it, it entails with it more integrity and people will appreciate it. Mm-hmm. When you say we need, you know, a hundred dollars pe- people that can do a hundred dollars or five hundred or more, we need for you to come forward because we're doing this project. Mm-hmm. Now the people have the ability to do that. And they even have to watch it because these principles that we're gonna talk about have to be recognized in order for that to be effective in their life. Exactly. Because the ministry of the church will take that money because they have natural needs. But you gave it on purpose. Right. You have to have at your forefront of your mind, the reason why I'm doing this is because, and God knows that purpose. Right. But there has to, whenever, I mentioned this in one of the previous lessons, whenever you're talking about something that will impact the natural world, Mm -hmm. this physical world, now it will require our participation. Mm -hmm. God has already provided spiritually for every need that we have in heavenly places. But there are corresponding natural resources in the earth that will respond to that substance when it's called upon. That's right. So I have to possess it before I will possess it. So I declare it, whatever it is God knows I have need of, Mm -hmm. I declare this is a conduit through which I give you access to manifest through my participation those things that are need to bring it to pass. Now, I said a whole lot there, but as we go through these lessons, and if you look at the previous lessons... Mm -hmm. That will make sense. So there's no true expectations. I want to show you in scripture where that's actually the case. If you would turn to 2 Kings chapter 4, and we're going to read verses 8 through 17. 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 8 through 17. Now, this is the the um, the, the account of the, the woman who was childless. She was a rich woman. And uh, she had a husband. Her husband was up in age. Uh, she had no children, and so she recognized that the man of God was coming by this particular area often, and she would invite him in so they would be able to rest, uh, have a meal, so on and so forth. And so something came to her mind. She said, "Do she said, do you know what? We should prepare a chamber for this man of God when he comes by, because I know that this man is a." Is a, is a man of God. So I, I'm not doing this for any stranger. I recognize this man has a relationship with God. Now, what happens next in response to that is very important. Uh, 
So we're going to start at verse number 8, and we're going to read through verse number 17. Okay, starting at verse number 8 of 2 Kings chapter 4. Now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shunem, where there was a notable woman, and she persuaded him to eat some food. So it was as often as he passed by, he would turn in there to eat some food. And she said to her husband, Look now, I know this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. Please let us make a small upper room on the wall and let us put a bed for him there and a table and a chair and a lampstand. So it will be whenever he comes to us, he can turn in there. And it happened one day that he came there and he turned into the upper room and lay down there. And then he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call this Shunammite woman. When he had called her, she stood before him. And he said to him, Say now to her, Look, you have been concerned for us with all, all of this care. What can I do for you? Do you want me to speak on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. So he said, What then is to be done for her? And Gehazi answered, Actually, she has no son, and her husband is old. Now, what we see here is something that we have to pay close attention to. First of all, this woman had given, mm -hmm. had sold into the kingdom, had sold into the man of God, recognizing that the reason why I'm doing this is because I want to honor God. Right. The man of God said she should have an expectation that's right. Of return on what it is that she's given. Now keep now keep this in mind. She didn't ask for it. Mm -hmm. The man of God recognized she's sowing this seed. She should have right. a right to a harvest. Now, she did have a need, mm -hmm. but she wasn't calling upon it. Right. Every time the man of God stopped by her house, the ability for that need to be met was present, but she had no expectation. Right. Now, keep this in mind, because this is what is happening oftentimes. We have needs of our own. Right. And when we go into the ministry or, 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 or we go to a ministry event, we go to church or we hear somebody speak and there's not it doesn't necessarily have to be an offering call. Right. God can move upon you to sow something because he knows that you have a need. Right. Now, keep in mind, you are not buying this blessing. That's right. You are not. No money in the world could have given her a son. I mean, if, if, if it was possible, it would have happened by then. Right. But there was something, there was a need that she had, that she had the ability to get God involved in it. That's right. So naturally, it couldn't take place. And when it came down to even the man of God saying, what is it that, can, that I can do for you? Mm -hmm. She didn't even bring it up. Um, right there, that point of her not having that expectation the kingdom is the best thing to have an expectation in That's because right. it gives harvest way beyond anything this world can offer. And we have to have this this um, confidence in the kingdom that it is a place where what cannot take place naturally. That's right. We have an expectation if we honor and we acknowledge the, 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 the rules and the laws that God right. has put in place. To participate in those, that we have confidence that those things can come to pass. That's right. Now, this is the th this is one of the reasons this ministry exists um, to teach the concept, laws, and principles upon which God's kingdom operates. That's right. The problem that many people have today is that they resist the perspective or the perception that I'm governed by rules and laws. Right. Because they have a paradigm that causes rules and laws to mean for righteousness or salvation's sake. Right. And so when they hear the word rule of law, they back away and they go, that, that doesn't apply to me. Well, that it does apply to you because right. we're talking about something. We're not talking about your righteousness or justification. Remember, we're talking about the kingdom of God pertains to the natural world. Right. So laws in the kingdom of God are means by which you re receive instruction and insight on how to manifest what you already possess mm -hmm. as a spiritual son of God. You don't obey to receive. You obey because you have received and God has given you insight on how to manifest what it is that he's already given you as a result of your salvation. You being right, you being justified with God. I think even just using um, a different perspective, understanding laws, plain period, are for our benefit regardless. That's right. Laws are for our benefit, so you can't ignore them because whatever paradigm you're in or however you're being taught, you can't ignore laws 
because they are there for your benefit. If you jump off the side of a building, you're going to fall. That law will not change based on anything. It's and, a law. And again, you know, co-pastor, you gave a very good example because that law governs this natural world. Right. Again, um, law, put it this way, and this, this is something that I, I try to explain to people that, you know, may, may have a perspective that grace excludes law in the sense that grace is a law. It, it, it is the means by which it is the established and recognized means in the kingdom of God of how you receive God's blessing and righteousness. Right. Faith is a law. Faith requires, it is an authorized means by which we receive from heaven. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about law, think about it this way. If you're already righteous, law doesn't offend you. That's right. If I'm a righteous person and I'm driving down the street or I'm walking in a store and I see two policemen coming towards me, I'm not offended, neither do I have apprehension. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, I feel a sense of security because That's the right. law is there to protect the rights that I already have as a citizen. That's right. Now think about it. If I'm here illegally, meaning that I'm not right with the law, mm -hmm. and I see them coming, all of a sudden I, I have a fence at their presence. I'm hesitant and I become very resistant to resistant to their presence because I'm not right with the law. Right. So as believers, you being made righteous in Christ Jesus, even the law of Moses should not offend you because right. you are right with that standard that that law was given to represent. That's right. I don't have to keep it because I'm already righteous. I don't have to fear it because I'm already righteous. That's right. So we took a, a side note there because we really do have to deal with that mm -hmm. because we're going to talk about laws. We're going to talk about principles and rules in the context of those who are in the kingdom. Mm -hmm. They take on a totally different meaning. In the kingdom paradigm, laws are there to govern, to give confidence in your doing, and also to assist in giving insight and instructions in manifesting what, yes. already possess, what we already possess as righteous citizens of God's kingdom. But in the scripture, we saw where the lady was giving, had a need, but had no expectation, so it went, went unmet. That's right. And even what the man of God suggested, now keep in mind, the man of God was prophesying to her mm -hmm. because later on, this same woman loses her property because an invading army comes in. Mm -hmm. Then that king comes back in the power and the person that's in possession of her property, she can't oust. She finds herself in the presence of the king and the prophet happens, ha happens to be telling the king about her story. Right. And the king says, well, who is this woman? He's the prophet. Says, well, as a matter of fact, there she is. That's right. Calls her forth. He says, what is it that I could do for you? What is it that the man of God said I will do for you? She said, I don't need your help because I'm amongst my people. Mm -hmm. Well, her people got scattered. Now right. she needed a stronger yes, force that's right. to overtake those that were protect, that were um, that that had taken her property. Mm -hmm. And the king says, your property is it has been restored to you today. That's right. So that giving. Mm -hmm. opened up not Something only she didn't even expect that in the future opened up not only her son being brought uh into her life but like you said benefits that she didn't even, didn't even expect now what did it it was her giving and the giving of expectation right the man of God had to give her that expectation, but we have to recognize that's a law. Yes. When you when you're when you're giving or participating in giving in the kingdom of God, it's not loss. It's investment. You're sowing. That's right. So when you're sowing and you're not dealing with natural seed as far as apple seeds, lemon seeds, which already have their character in it, mm -hmm. you have to give it its character. You have that's to give right. it its assignment. And again, you're not buying anything. It's the kingdom acknowledging and respecting laws that it has established right. within it to meet the needs of its people. So that's the first thing. You have to have an expectation. Now, the second thing is this. The second thing that you can sow or you can give in the kingdom, call it giving, but you recognize that you're actually sowing because in the kingdom you never give anything away that's in right. the form of loss. The second reason why it might be impossible or, or not impossible, but well, it is impossible if you don't have an expectation, but you don't realize a harvest may be because of wrong motivations. That's right. Wrong motivations. We gave the example earlier that a person is in a service mm -hmm. or they may have before they left home determined this is what I'm going to give whether or not God moves or not. Right. I don't really you know, that's not going to move me. The spirit of God is not going to tell me what to give. So the person, uh, the person leaves home with a set amount 
and they say, this is what I can afford to give, this is what I have left, or this is what I want to give, whatever the situation might be, they enter in, and because they don't want to be the only one not giving. Right. That's or, definitely wrong motivation. Or the person has a lot of money to give, and the person is waiting for the opportunity to show everybody how much they can give. Wrong motivation. That's right. God has no honor in that. That wasn't given for the purpose of the kingdom. Mm-hmm. That was for a personal motivation. That's right. And therefore, the kingdom doesn't receive it. The church will receive it. But the kingdom does not receive it because it wasn't a fruit of faith. Right. Now, I want you to look at something. Turn to Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6. Jesus talks about this verses 1 through 4, where he actually talks about how a person can actually give and the kingdom not receive it. And the person received another kind of reward that doesn't benefit them past the moment. And I fear that this is happening to a lot of people. Again, we're talking about the laws of harvest. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to sow a seed in the kingdom, that seed has to be for and on a purpose, has to be done on purpose. And and here Jesus says these people are giving for a purpose that has nothing to do with the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Therefore, their reward comes from the world and is short lived. So Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 4. Okay. Um, Starting at verse 1. Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you have no reward from your Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a, a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. So we see right there, Jesus gives us the the rules by which giving operates. He said, if you give to be seen, then you being seen is your reward. There's no further harvest. Right. But if you give in secret for a purpose or motivation that's onto God, God becomes responsible for making sure that what you gave for, he is responsible for bringing to pass. The final thing that I want to actually point out is sowing dishonor, not seed. Sowing dishonor, not seed. Now, we're running out of time, but but what I want to do is to just lay this foundation before we move into uh, our next lesson on our next uh, broadcast. It is possible when sowing, what you call sowing, not to be actually sowing seed Mm -hmm. because there are rules that qualify what you give as being seed. That's right. So you you, you didn't meet certain qualifications up front to qualify what you gave as seed. So it's not even seed. What it actually does is it sows dishonor. Right. You dishonor God even by giving. That's right. So we're going to stop right there. We're going to pick up there on our next broadcast. I pray that this has been a blessing to you. Um, You know, we didn't uh, do this to offend anyone, but to inform everyone and allow the word of God to speak for itself. If you haven't looked at the previous lessons, please do so, including this one before you look at the next one, Mm -hmm. because you're going to need it to understand what is taking place. I'm Dr. J.C. Matthews. I'm here with co-pastor Gina. We love you. We enjoyed our time with you and look forward to seeing you soon. God bless you.